to start off, tell us about yourself. Give us your name, age, and occupation. My name is Bruce Peralt. I am 45 years old, and my occupation is a realtor and insurance uh, sales. Why are you here on Survivor? I'm here on Survivor because this is the ultimate social game. What's your history with watching Survivor? My history with watching Survivor is I've watched every episode, but I started watching week three of season one. Give me one Survivor winner and one non-winner who you identify with the most. It could possibly be the same person, but Jeremy Collins um, in the rest of the winner side. <clears throat> um, reason being is because he definitely you know, played a, a, a value-based game. Um, as far as for a non-winner, um, a non-winner, I'm not even sure. Probably someone like, as funny as this might sound, someone like um, uh, Coach. Coach was cool to watch. He was, he was very, uh, <laughs> very animated and a lot of antics, which is good. What's your favorite moment in Survivor history? Uh, my favorite moments in watching Survivor will be the family visits. Um, I know we haven't seen them recently, um, but the family visit, I think, really means, you know, that's my favorite part, just for the fact that, you know, you, you have people that have been away from their family for whatever period of time, and, you know, it gives them a little bit of a, a, a jolt of, of energy because, you know, they, they remember why they're there. What's one life experience you feel has prepared you most for the game? One life experience has prepared me the most for, for Survivor for this game um, is, you know, I was abandoned as a child and I was placed into the foster care system, um, you know, and before being placed into the foster care system, I was abandoned for about three days. So there's a, a level of survival there, even though I didn't know it, I was at the age of two. Um, but, you know, growing up in the foster care system, you, you gain a sense of, you know, being able to survive because you're not, you never know how long you're going to be with the person that is there with you. Um, my parents are foster parents for, you know, 20 years and a hundred and some odd kids, 127, I believe, kids went in and out of the house. And of those 127, my parents adopted eight. So, you know, I, you tend to learn how to, how to kind of grow bonds when you know that they're going to be there, but then you also tend to not grow those bonds when you know it's only a short-term scenario or situation. What excites you the most about the new era of Survivor? What excites me the most about the new era of Survivor would, would definitely be what, you know, Jeff and the, you know, the production of Survivor has up their sleeve. I love the idea that there is always going to be something new. Um, so that is exciting. But, and that's for the moment. What keeps the excitement for me on a regular basis is that it's a, it's a social game. It's a game where it's a, a construct where you're looking at people and right now, like we're judging, we're looking at each other, we're nodding and smiling through our masks and we're already building an idea of what this person is, maybe what they do for a living or whatever have you. And we could be right, but 95% of the time we're probably going to be wrong. So then we start the game and we have the conversation and the social part really makes the most sense. My job is going to be able to figure out who, who these people are, what makes them tick, you know, their, their do's and don'ts without them even telling me. Like, that's, that's the exciting part. Challenges, challenges and all that other stuff. Food rewards, food rewards, who cares? Like, the, just talking to people and seeing how they, what makes them tick, that's exciting to me. What do you think people will perceive you as? <laughs> people will pr probably perceive me as this arrogant dude walking around <laughs> because the my my level of confidence about who I am is 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 okay at this point just for the fact that I'm 45 I've already lived this life of uncertainty in my 20s and trying to figure out who I am in my 30s now I know who I am now in my 40s and you know, some people might look at me and say, oh, he's, he's a little arrogant or, you know, he's, you know, um, maybe someone that I 
can't talk to. I would say probably a quarter of them will think that. And the others will just look at me and be like, oh, that dude is just, he's going to be fun. Um, because I just have a carefree sense about me all here. What type of player are you looking for in an alliance? I'm looking for someone that, you know, as far as for a player that I'm looking for is for an alliance, I'm looking for someone that will talk but not talk too much. Um, reason being is if you go back and you look at Survivor and where people have made mistakes, from what we see in the edited version is we see people that have conversations that turn around and they have all the conversations with other people about the conversation that you had which is a good thing and a bad thing. You can manipulate that any way you want, but to have a, someone that's in a great alliance with you is someone that's gonna bring information back to you, but not spill the information that you give to them um, and then be able to work together and vice versa um, to see an end goal. You know, the end goal could be you make it to the, to the merge and then, then we part ways. So the end goal could be make it to final four and then, all bets are off. Now it's one for the other. Shake hands like a Wendell and Dom and call it a day, you know. Um, but just like I said, the perfect alliance partner would be someone that just doesn't blab too much. How eager will you be to look for advantages in the game? Um, I will not be too eager to look for advantages in the game. They will, they will happen upon me um, if it's meant to be. You know, um, I've seen in the years of watching a lot of people get caught up in trying to find the advantage and, you know, they know that they're being voted off and the biggest thing I want to do is go and try and find an advantage. Why do that? Go talk to people, have a conversation, figure out what's going on, put your thumb on it, and then maybe adjust it as necessary when, whenever you can because you could have to outplay, outwit, and outlast, but outwit comes in at that point in time. So being able to tell these people, certain things that maybe might change their mindset or have them question what's going on in their own head um, or their own alliances maybe can help me out. So searching for, you know, advantages, you know, I know that they're there. I will be looking, but I will not be searching. Those are two different things. What's the one thing you told yourself you wouldn't do in this game? The one thing I told myself I wouldn't do in this game um, I didn't tell myself any because or the reason being is because I'm not the kind of person that would ever do anything ruthless against another human being um, or to get another human being to be spiteful of me. Um, so as far as for the game, the things that I will not do, I, I can't really answer that question because I can't think like that. Um, I will, I will have the conversation. I will have, I will lie to people um, if need be. I will bend the truth if need be, and I will tell the truth. Um, but I don't think that there is anything that I really wouldn't do, um, just because I don't really live a life of, you know, of that. Of you know, what would you not do? What's the best advice you received before coming out to play? Um, the best advice that I received before coming out here was from my daughter and my son. Um, they play sports on a competitive level, which is great. Um, and whenever they go out, before they get, you know, to their game or they get on the bus to go to their game and we have a conversation on the phone or whatever have you, um, myself and my wife included, we tell them just to have fun. And my kids said that to me and like, have fun, dad. And, um, you know, my wife said it as well, just have fun. So that is the best advice that I, uh, that I received was just go out, have fun. Um, no matter what happens, you know, um, just have a good time, you know. And when I make it to the final four and I end up being crowned the Survivor 44 uh, season champion, um, I can just basically say I had fun. Can you come up with your own weird phrase that could be said at a challenge to unlock an idol? Um, <laughs> a phrase to be able to use to unlock an, an, an idol would probably be something like, you know, a rhinoceros is an animal that is very 
delicate to birds, runs around <laughs> and prances through the forest. I don't know. <laughs> what celebrity or fictional character would you want to come out for a loved one's visit? A, a celebrity or fictional character that I would want to come out to see me on a, on a visit. Um, Martin Luther King, you know, that, that would be, that would be something that would be great for him to be able to see because Survivor has done such an awesome job over the last, you know, couple plus years in adding diversity and, and inclusion, um, all the way across the board, you know, to, to know that he had a part in spearheading some of those things from 30, 40, you know, 50 plus years ago, um, you know, that are just getting better. That would be probably a great visit. Yeah.